Joined this morning now by the original bozo, Larry Harmon. Larry, as I say welcome, I, I note that over the years you recruited hundreds of bozos. Yes, Really, uh, because you franchised it. Yeah, and at our peak we had uh, 183, 183 bozos all over the world. Now we, have, we still have 76 all over what the world. What did you look for in a bozo? Well, <laughs> the first one I looked for almost was Willard Scott. Well, that's, why, that's what I was bringing, <laughs> that's what I was leading up to. I mean, exactly what is it you look for in a bozo? You look for something with a warm smile, uh, a, a, a tremendous outward-going nature, Somebody that has the ability to reach out and look out to the audience, to the to the young people and the adults, and and communicate beautifully, communicate with these people emotionally and and mentally, and that's what Willard was. And you know what I, I say? This is a, 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 a what we call one of those uh, uh, mutual admiration societies. But do you know this man affected my life in more ways than any one single person in television? Because doing kids shows just what you said. You establish a rapport with the camera. There's warmth. There's love. There's gentleness. There's personal appearances that help to go out and establish your personal relations with people. Uh -huh. I will always love you very much. Uh -huh. Tremendous experience. How'd you develop the character, Larry Richmond? Well, you, you know, I go back to the time when I was just a child, really. Because I remember, I, I think I go back to the time when I was just a little, a, a little boy. I remember back four or five years old and in, in kindergarten. I never did anything before that. I don't know anything. What, did, what do you know at four years old? Mm -hmm. I remember in kindergarten, they had finished a little class, and the teacher said, uh, um, she says, anybody else want to do anything? Well, all teachers say that just to finish the class. So you figured you'd get up and entertain the truth. You got it. So I, got, I ran up on the stage, <laughs> and she says, she says, what do you want? I says, I don't know. She says, well, what are you going to do? I says, I don't know. Yeah. She says, do you dance? I says, I don't know. Yeah. She says, do you sing? I says, I don't know. She says, well, you better do something. I says, what? She says, anything. So I danced and I sang and I got a big hand. I never forgot that applause yeah. and I carried that all the rest of my life. And yeah. as I grew up, I wondered why I couldn't project that into the world. And of course, the result was I was studying to be a doctor at USC. And uh, in the 19, late 1940s after the Second War. And I thought, why well, be a doctor? of just uh, two or three hundred patients. Why not be a doctor of humor, love, understanding, and, 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 and peace in this world? And w one thing, tell them there's a beautiful story about how Bozo actually saved Capitol Records uh, with the Bozo yeah. first talking book that kids had for talking what, stories. What, Capitol Records was in trouble? Oh, yeah. And Bozo, Bozo yeah. put the talking You bought the right, the circus yeah. clown, there was a Bozo with Ringling for oh, years, yeah. and the character was basically on him, right? But yeah. tell them that quick story about how you, Bozo the Clown's talking book saved Capitol Records. Well, they, they, before they found Frank Sinatra and, and uh -huh. Judy Garland and his other ones, they were just trying to get off the ground. And what they got was, uh, basically, was the idea to do the voice on, on a record. There was nothing established beyond that point. And for about nine or ten years, in the, in the 40s, that was the majority of money they had made on... Uh, Talk kids how to read. There was a little bell. And every time the kids heard a bell, they knew to turn the page, and they learned to read a book by listening to a bozo on a record. Real quickly, while we've got a minute left, I know yeah. you want to touch on it. You, yes. You've got a, a bozo for presidency campaign going on. Uh, it's not just a bozo for presidency. It is bozo for president, and that is me, and I am running for the president of the United States. It all started uh, for this. Uh, if we can see, this was... These were no bozos. And what did I mean by that? Have you lost it, Brian? No, I, I, don't, I think so. I've gotten caught up here. I, I started this by uh, do something good for yourself. Don't do drugs, don't smoke, don't drink, and look out for the safety rules. That was the beginning. Uh, Willie might have the other one. You bet, Doctor. And there you go. Now, the second thing we did was we ended up with bozo for president. A lot of the media said to me, why don't you run for president? You've been interested in the future of our country and our world, and especially with the, with the, with the nuclear situation that's going on today all over the world. They said you worked with President de Gaulle, with Golda Meir, with... So put uh, a bozo in charge. They said put the real bozo in the White <laughs> House. <laughs> Could you buy that? No, no, no. I think we'll leave it there. Larry we Harmon. Got, we got more Larry Harmon. No, no, that's all right. Magazine? That's all right. No, we'll let it go at that. Larry Harmon. Right. Thank you. But I'd like to do one thing. Larry, you're going to run right into the station break. No, I want to leave you with You and are going to have to reminisce during the break. I'm going to leave you with what Bozo always says. Only Just $2. Just keep <laughs> laughing. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> keep laughing as we take the station. Check, 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 check. B-O-Z-O. B-O-Z-O B-O-Z-O
wants to try his hand at politics, and today he made his first campaign appearance at New York's Columbia University. I hope you'll come. I had this kind of enthusiasm across the nation. I guarantee I'll be in that White House come next November. And I want to thank all of you students here and the university for having uh, given me the great privilege of being here today. I hope a momentous occasion, uh, which will be the beginning, I hope, of four wonderful years in that White House. All right. So far, we should tell you there's no word on who Bozo wants for his running mate.